up and down cycle where in a binary capitalist system does not work in China. So if you go there in China, you can understand they have their own way of doing things. That's why I use Tai Chi as an example in my book that everything is slow and slow and slow and you don't want to lose balance. If you lose balance, you lose. Hi, uh, my name is Wei Yan. I, I'm the author of From the Great Wall to Wall Street, a cross-cultural look at leadership and management uh, of the U.S. and China. Now, why don't Westerners and, and Chinese, or for the matter, Asians, understand each other? Uh, why don't they just instinctively uh, try to understand each other? I think there are many reasons. And if you look at the development of our world, um, uh, you know, ever since the 18th century, 1750 or so, when Westerners started going to Asia, when the British went to India, and you have kind of like a, a dominant Western mindset, kind of permeating everything. They were the colonizers, they occupied the land, they, they taught everybody you know, Christianity, the, the Western way of thinking, all that. So there's a concept that, look, whatever Westerners have are the best, and we can only follow and uh, emulate them. Uh, I don't think that is true anymore. Uh, that, is, that was true if you subscribe to a, a kind of Western mindset is that you are always in contact with somebody. And if you win, then you winners take all. And that's kind of a Western black and white type concept. I'm stronger than you, I have the right to exploit you. And that was the colonists did in the 18th and 19th century. Uh, but I think today, the world's a lot smaller. We, don't ra we run out of land. We run out of places to conquer. And uh, we have problems with global warming, where problems that, that, are, that, are, that are central to one country is also the same as the other country. So we can really have this mindset that we can by ourselves, and then we conquer you, and we can force our beliefs on you. You can't do that anymore. In fact, we have to look at a way to solve common problems. This is why I think the, the Chinese way of thinking, which is kind of seek the common ground, and to, to kind of like deal with differences later, will work better into this world going forward in many things, in, in global warming, in global politics, in poverty alleviation, all that. I think that uh, there's, a, there's some room for that debate and, and for a better understanding in that sense. What is Chinese characteristic? There's concept of benevolence, which means tolerance, okay, understanding others without doing harm to others. And, and in the business setting, that means that you're not going to kill me, I'm not going to kill you, I'm not going to do things just for profit's sake, I have my employees to consider. And it's not exactly the Western way of doing things, but the introducing Chinese element of like, let's work together and get a problem solved. So you see a lot of uh, business solutions in China where employees are part of the solution. They're not the ones at the bottom where, where uh, uh, they were giving a severance or cut off and not. No, they're part of that. They take a salary cut along with the managers. And so that if things go well, they, they end up getting full employment again. But things like that happen all the time in China. I think this is the concept of Chinese element at work in, in a very Western way of business setting. And you won't find that here. You know, there are a few cases that, that you know, people uh, adopted that kind of practice. New Core, I cite in the book, is, is one example. The steel mill during the recession didn't lay off anybody, but everybody has to take a salary cut. And that's what Chinese, China, uh, Chinese people do. Can the Chinese manager be successful like, overseas, like in the US? And the reverse question, has, can the Westerner be successful in China? I, I think. Um, it might be easier for Westerners to be successful in China. Um, the reason is that the Chinese revere uh, hierarchy. And the Westerners are working in China generally at a high level. They have the authorities, they have respect for these uh, underlings. And for a Chinese to work over here, um, if they think they have the authority, they have to think about how they express the authority because Americans here, uh, uh, they work in a company, it's a professional activity. Oh, I do my work, uh, you review me, I get paid. And it's not that I don't have to have a good relationship with you. I have to make sure that I don't piss you off, but I'm not going to like, have to kowtow to you and, 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 and you know, hold your back all the time. And that's what expected in, in China. And managers coming over here, they would expect that. You're not going to get this kind of treatment from your subordinates. And uh, you may take people out for lunch more often than, say, a management manager would do to their subordinates. But doesn't mean that they will buy your system of thinking and you have to earn their respect. You have to earn respect by working the same way they do.
which is putting the hours, getting the results done, uh, uh, you know, have, have the accountability, responsibility delineated, and, uh, and then be able to like, convince people in a group basis, because Americans are generally very vocal people. And that's good, because they have ideas. They want to talk about the ideas. And you cannot suppress it. You have to make sure they have the opportunity to talk and then voice their opinions. And you have to how about bring down the ideas and they contest each other and massage into a final solution. That somehow does not work too well in China, because people generally don't fight each other in meetings. They fight each other behind the back, but they don't do it openly. So there you, you have a different way of, of doing things. I, I think that it's harder for Chinese managers to work overseas for that particular reason. I think you know, that actually shows uh, not too many of these overseas investments have been successful, you know, mainly because of this, I think. Other people, uh, if they want to navigate a cross-cultural type of business life, um, what kind of um, background would they have to have? Um, I think today you have a lot more people like me, a lot of people that are bilingual, you know, like in USC, there's so many Asian students walking around. And, and they are the prime examples of someone that could be successful in these two worlds. Now, but the thing is, you know, to be successful, you've got to understand both sides well enough. Um, you can't just come here, take classes, um, and then you spend time with your Chinese friends, and you think that you know America. But that's not how it is. Their knowledge is primarily book knowledge. So, and then after graduate, they work a year or two, they go back to China. Now, do they have something to offer to China? They do. But is this something that's really um, insightful? I doubt it. And um, so that's when I think I would encourage them to really dig in, understand the American politics, you know, uh, maybe go to uh, um, some election campaign, or understand how this system works.